Hello. Delays in court are long, unfortunately, especially in Montreal, uh, in Quebec City. So there are ways that the legislator tries to deal with that. The legislator tries to impose strict limits on uh, the time the case should be dealt with by the parties, by the lawyers. And one of those uh, strict limits is six, year, six months for uh, the trial preparation. Uh, meaning that from the moment, and there is a point here from what moment, but from the certain moment when the court case is deemed to have started, uh, the parties have six months. If they want more, they have to apply uh, for the court's authorization. Uh, but normally they have six months to prepare and then uh, ask to set a date for the trial. If they fail to do so, then uh, the plaintiff, the party in attack, in demand, uh, is deemed to have just withdrawn, uh, to just put it bluntly, uh, as if there was no case from the beginning. But, of course, uh, this is drastic. Uh, sometimes, uh, because of that, the prescription, the limitation period is already over, and the party cannot reinitiate the case from the beginning, because very often the prescription period is just three years, and uh, it's possible that the party has initiated his or her case just at the very last moment. So now, if the case is abandoned, that prescription period uh, has run through and uh, there is no way to reinitiate. Re so sometimes it's not just an inconvenience. Sometimes this Article 177 basically bars the party from going back to court because of the fact that this uh, deadline was missed. Uh, but, as you can see, there is a point, because we are talking about an impossibility to act. So, uh, clearly, there might be a situation when somebody was uh, in a hospital and just not necessarily in a coma, but actually could not act. Because, again, the courts say that it's not about absolute impossibility to act. It's like about relative impossibility to act. Uh, basically, it means that if you miss the deadline, you'll have to convince the judge that your situation was an impossibility to act. In fact, impossibility in fact. It's not that you thought that it would be inconvenient. It's not that you uh, didn't like, but in fact, you couldn't act faster. So this impossibility to act, in fact, might save you from missing deadline and the court might give you uh, some extension in the time limit. Uh, it is an important thing uh, because sometimes you miss the deadline not because you actually was in a hospital or something like that or couldn't get back to the country, uh, but because your lawyer uh, miscalculated, so missed several days a week, maybe a month or so, because as the Court of Appeal specifically mentioned, there are ways, and as I also mentioned previously, there are ways to calculate when this six-month period starts. Uh, according to the Court of Appeal, there are four moments, and they're, they have a distance between them, or might have a distance between them, uh, not only weeks, but actually months. Because uh, one thing is when uh, the application was notified on the other party, another thing when this 45-day period allowed by the code before establishing the case protocol 
is over. Uh, another thing is when this case protocol, in case of any uh, doubt or contestation, was actually established uh, by the court, or when it was presumed to have been accepted. Uh, and, well, there are there are ways to calculate. And because of that, it might be plus minus 20 days, plus minus month or so. So there might be a mistake, mistake in calculation. And uh, the courts usually take this mistake as a client's impossibility to act, meaning that a lawyer's uh, mathematical, a clerical mistake uh, should not prevent the party from establishing and protecting uh, the rights. So, uh, shall we say that if it was a lawyer's mistake, that uh, the client is protected, and even if the deadline is missed, citing the lawyer's mistake, uh, you could still, as a party, just ask the court to extend the time limit. Well, yes and no. Because, again, as the, as it m might be just commonsensical, the court doesn't take any lawyer's mistake as an excuse, as an impossibility to act, in fact, by the party. Uh, the idea is that if it was an honest mistake, actually a mistake of calculation really, then yes, uh, the party should not be de deprived from its right. But if, theoretically at least, if it was the party's uh, fault, the party's negligence, if the delay was just months, sometimes even years, and nobody did anything, and then to avoid sanction, the party would be citing the lawyer's mistake, then the court would not accept that. Or if it was an actual lawyer's fault, actual lawyer's negligence, not a simple miscalculation, but negligence, then again, uh, the court would not accept that and you might lose uh, your case simply because the deadline was missed. So if ever you go for litigation in Quebec, uh, take the case protocol seriously. Just look through the deadlines. And uh, however much you trust your lawyer, at least keep an eye on the deadlines and uh, verify if your lawyer, maybe a like, very much busy lawyer, uh, does not miss those deadlines. At least not as far as it could not be rectified as a simple mistake. Uh, because again, even if you have a lawyer and if it's true that your lawyer is very much responsible for what's going on, having no communication, having the, no questions asked might be seen by a judge as your own negligence and that might destroy your case. So this is it. Uh, a lawyer's mistake can be seen as the client's impossibility to act in fact and can save the day, but not always. Thank you and have a nice day.